Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are starting on tiling the kitchen, which is very, very exciting. In my last video, I shared with you guys that the tile was delivered, and it is time to get it on the floor. Now, I've never tiled anything in my life, even the smallest item. Actually, that's a lie. I did tile a nightstand once when the tiled furniture trend was really popular, and that was actually pretty simple. I didn't find it to be too challenging. However, we are doing an entire kitchen floor and a breakfast nook floor. I've never cut tile before, and this is travertine tile. So I'm not too sure how easy that is to cut so we will find out together and as you guys can see The floor is currently covered in the old mortar So I removed the tile which actually used to look something like this It's just like the 12 by 24 kind of slate looking tiles and I removed those and we're left with this mortar now This particular kitchen was actually renovated about a year and a half ago So it was a newly renovated kitchen when I moved in but it was just not my style at all and to give you guys an understanding the subfloor which the the mortar is on top of is actually underneath the cabinetry so when this kitchen was done they laid all the tile first throughout the entire kitchen and then they put the cabinets on top of the tile which traditionally I don't know if that's normal I just feel like whenever I've seen kitchens it's normally tiled up to the cabinetry so for me it's a little bit challenging to get out some of those tiles and another downside to this is it means that the subfloor is actually traveling underneath the cabinetry meaning that we can't remove it easily so I am actually going to be tiling directly on top of the old mortar. I do know this is not how a professional would do it. However, this mortar is stuck. It is virtually impossible to get off this floor. And I'm just trying to make this process a little bit more simpler on myself. And I personally just cannot see the tile ever coming up from mortaring over the top of this mortar that's on the ground. I am just going to do it, you guys, and it's going to be a trial and error, and I will let you know how this floor holds up. Now, of course, I want it to hold up forever, but if for some reason something pops off in 2.8 years, I will inform you of that. So, let's get started. So here is a good look at the mortar. Now, as you could see, the previous tile was just placed on top. It popped off in a second. Super easy to get off, but this little chunk of mortar right here took me 15 minutes to chip away, and it's actually chipping away at the hardy backer board. That is how attached this mortar is to this board and this board here is traveling underneath the counter so I actually can't remove it traditionally you would unscrew this and then just pull up the entire board which the mortar is attached to it's probably hard to tell here but we are gonna go through and just scrape the surface get any of this plaster residue off any of these kind of chunks of mortar that are imperfect um, and then maybe even give it like a quick sand just to get everything kind of a little bit more level and that should be a good place for tiling back through and removed the rest of the tiles and cleared out the breakfast nook because the tile is going to be going through the breakfast nook and into the kitchen area as well. my shop vac and I vacuumed the entire floor. Every crack, every crease, every single little crevice you are going to vacuum. That's just because we want the mortar, the new mortar, to stick really well to the old mortar and we don't need any of this old debris or anything and we don't need anything that could potentially elevate the tiles as well because it's pretty smooth and flat surface as is and then I ended up heading to Home Depot so I can grab some supplies. <gasps> Oh. oh, I got it. Alrighty guys, in the tile section at Home Depot, and I'm gonna pick up a tile saw actually because renting a tile saw is pretty expensive anyways, and this one is $149. It's actually on sale. I saw online that it's normally $229, and this one should work great. We're also going to get this seven inch blade here. Also grabbed three bags of the mortar. Now this particular mortar is for natural stone since we're doing travertine, and it's also meant for large tiles, meaning that I'm assuming it means that it sticks larger tiles down well, which is great. Our tiles are small but they are natural stone and I think this is going to be the perfect mortar for that. I'm 
just made it back from Home Depot and laid out some of the tiles on the ground. And I wanted to share with you guys the variation in the tiles. So these are from Clay Tile. These are the pantry pavers in, I don't remember which shade they are in, but I'll put it up here. And I love them. They are such a pretty color. They're like a honey topish. You can see a bunch of the variation in the tiles here. And I just love how they have a little bit of a distressed look to them. And that's because they're actually tumbled. Whereas a lot of the actual distressed tiles I was looking at were just overly expensive. like very expensive and I thought these were a good alternative that just made it a bit cheaper as well. Something else that we are going to be doing is actually using the original lines that were laid for this tile because all the tile is definitely straight. Like if you look at this line, even if you were to go all the way back here, it's a perfectly straight line. So we're gonna follow the line when we're doing this and actually use the guides that are already on the floor kind of to our advantage so we don't have to measure out too much of the flooring. Made a little bit of an update. We actually ended up making it so that the lines, the very intentional lines, are in the direction kind of of the walkway, which you see more of them in this way. But of course, when you're facing this way, the lines are more broken. They're not as, you know, directional. Justin pointed out, he was like, do you want the direction of the tile kind of, you know, in the walking direction? I was like, yes, absolutely. So we ended up swapping that. So now um, it just kind of was flipped 90 degrees. Added some water to our bucket, and then next up is the mortar. She's heavy. Why does it sound like that? It does look like a witch's brew. <laughs> okay, it's actually so pretty. Ah! Oh no! guys I wasn't filming this first little section I do apologize um, but I'm just going in and adding our first layer of mortar scoring it kind of with the trowel I mean here we go here goes nothing so I'm actually gonna be using this piece of wood as a spacer and the reason being is I don't want these tiles to be perfectly spaced I love the idea of kind of having them a little inorganic so that's why I'm not using spacers and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and then just place each tile individually All I had to do for this process was just slap some mortar down. As you could see, Justin was helping me with that. And then I used the trowel to comb it out. And the reason why you actually use the comb trowel is so that it removes some of the mortar. And that way, when you go back in and press the tile down, the larger sections of mortar will just fill in those removed areas. And it's a nice, smooth application. And then just make sure to remove any mortar from any cuts that you need to make. That way, when you apply them later, um, it's not a double thick layer of mortar. Good morning, guys. I am so excited to share with you how the tile's looking because it is looking so freaking amazing so far. Look how great this is looking. So as you can see, it gets much lighter when it actually dries down. So this is fully dry in terms of like the tops of the tile. The actual mortar is still a little bit wet. It's actually pretty cold in LA um, and overcasty outside. So I think it's just taking a bit longer to dry. Also, it really has only been like 18 hours. We're over here pretty early and started yesterday around three or four and we were able to achieve this much tiling with both Justin and I and we probably spent like two two and a half hours on this section um because it was getting pretty dark out so we wanted to start again today and that is what we're doing we're gonna start adding some more tiles here mix up some mortar and get going <sighs> I 
just love the look of placing these tiles by hand without using spacers or really like a template um, because it gives you such an organic look and feel. It really looks like it's coming out of like a Spanish villa or you know, it's just from an older time period. All right, update guys. I am all the way at the corner. And I'm currently like stuck doing a bit of contortion in the corner, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do to get the tile laid right. And it's looking so good. I am so happy. Good morning, guys. It is day three of tiling, and I am about to walk on it for the first time, and I want to do it with no shoes on. I know there's no grout, but oh my gosh. And we also just kind of wiped a couple of tiles right now just to see if there was any dust on the surface. So we're going to see how these dry back compared to the ones around it. But it is so good. Oh my gosh. I cannot walk on this yet because we just tiled this yesterday, but all of this area was 48 hours ago. So it is now walkable, and it feels amazing. Here is a look at the other side. Now we have quite a bit of cuts that need to be done here. That's why it looks like there's just kind of tile running down the center sections. We're gonna be doing all the cuts today. So for the edges, all the way around here, um, and anything like within the corner over here to finish off the look. Who wants to come take a dip in the fountain? Nice and clean. Here is the tile side. Something interesting about tile saw blades is they are not sharp at all, like in any way, shape, or form, and it's because they actually grind down the tile in the stone as opposed to cutting it like a normal blade wood for wood. All right, tile saw is set up. We actually put this just outside on the balcony. We did a practice cut just to make sure that it was working and it worked great. It did take a little bit longer than I thought though. You do have to kind of push it through slowly and apply quite a bit of pressure. However, I do have travertine tiles, which might also be, you know, a harder stone to cut, but let's get started. Also, it seems like every house in the neighborhood is doing a little construction today. So this is the perfect day to make loud noise. We have five cut pieces of tile, which will be going right back here. But I'm gonna just kind of pick which ones fit in the spaces nicely. in the dining room we have the tile that we're putting in now but I really want to do this like braided tile threshold which is definitely a little daring I don't know why I want to do it but I do and it's essentially going to be like a tile detail that's the width of our archways and it's going to go in this archway and the larger one over there so first I want to cut all of these to the exact edge I have a straight edge here so I can just kind of put it up and I want to cut these so that they're perfectly in alignment I'm going to mark the cuts these are our cuts for the tile. All right, guys, we're going in for a corner cut, which should be a fun one. Let's see. Watch how satisfying this is. There we go look at the floor in the breakfast nook it is completely done now some of the edges are still a little wet from the tile saw but we went ahead and did everything look at how straight and nice this border is here cannot believe i cut that with tile saw like i've never used a tile saw before look at these like these nice little intricate cuts around the beam looks so nice so now we're going to work in here adding additional tile pieces to this area um, back here and then we have the most to do over here the 
door trim actually doesn't allow us to put our last piece of tile under. So we're gonna use this multi-tool, which actually Dremel sent me this, which was super nice of them. Um, I've never used one of these before. <laughs> Here we go, removed it. Now we have enough space to slip our tile underneath. The floor is completely laid. All of the cuts have been done and we are about to start sticking them down. It's a little blue in here at the moment. We are gonna start sticking these down. We're gonna do a layer of our mortar across here, put these down and then kind of work around the entire kitchen. Oh, I also totally forgot that I have yet to share with you guys kind of what's happening over here. So the tile's actually going to change going into here in terms of shape. So it's gonna be the same exact tile, like the same uh, travertine material, but it's gonna change in shape. So right here is gonna be a new threshold and then it's gonna change. So this is gonna be a later project. Good morning everyone. I am currently in the hallway because I finished the tile yesterday. All of the cuts, we completed them. Every single piece of tile has been laid throughout the kitchen and the breakfast nook. I actually wasn't able to get ready this morning, so please disregard the look that I have going on. Our power has been out all morning long. The rain in Los Angeles is absurd today um, and has been for the past couple of days, but I'm excited to share with you guys the flooring and I wanna give you like a full walkthrough, so let me flip the camera. I'm gonna start with the breakfast nook because it has the best lighting. Like, look at this tile, you guys. I love it. It is perfect in here. I don't know yet what the breakfast nook's going to be in terms of color or how I'm going to be designing this space, but of course, we do have an idea for the kitchen, so let me share with you guys what this looks like in the kitchen. Now, the lighting might be a little odd at the moment. It's very overcasty, very rainy, but I hope you guys can get the vibe. Something I did last night over here was actually test out two different grout samples. They're actually in caulk forms because they sell the exact caulking that you can use, you know, on like cabinet edges or whatever it is that matches the grout. And that's how I figured I could sample them. However, I do not like either of these at all. I'm actually kind of going for something in between these two. I want to do like a mushroomy kind of a tone, almost like as if you were actually outside, kind of like a warm gray that maybe has the tiniest, tiniest touch of like a green tint in it. This is a little too dark. This is very tone on tone and it is not at all the vibe in here. So something between these two, um, it's kind of the color that I'm going for. I will say I've been having a little bit of a hard time trying to figure out the grouting scenario in terms of what brand of grout I should use. I do know that I need sanded grout because the joints are about three eighths to a half inch wide. So I know I need sanded grout, but I just don't know the exact color. So I'm gonna have to play around with that and figure out which grout color to do in here because that's really going to be such an impact as well. Like as you guys can see at the moment, the tile's kind of on the lighter side, but I do want to add a bit more darkness just so there's not as stark of a contrast between the cabinetry and the flooring. Oh my gosh, but the sun's coming out. Let me share with you guys what it looks like. Look how beautiful. I am just like in awe. Like this is so stunning. I absolutely love it. And do you also see how the lines are not just like perfectly straight? They have just the slightest bit of organic nature to them. And that came with hand laying every single tile and just kind of placing them, stepping back and then tweaking if needed. And I just think this looks so good. Like Justin and I really killed this project. And then of course down here, Check that out, you guys. The tile looks great under the fridge. We have it under the oven. But as I mentioned, the grout's just been a bit of a tricky scenario. So if any of you guys have recommendations for a color of grout, a brand of grout, anything relating to grout, I already know I'm gonna have to grout bag the entire floor, which is going to definitely be a process, which I'll share with you guys. But I just don't know exactly what color. I'm a little stuck at the moment. I think I should get some samples. I know some places have samples. If anyone knows of a place in Los Angeles that has grout samples, leave a comment below, that would be highly appreciated. But to be honest with you guys, I'm driving 45 minutes over to my friend's house right now so I can edit this into the video and upload it because I have no internet. So I am going to go head over and do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I am loving the tile. Like we are 90, 
4% complete with the kitchen. The last 6% is literally the tile. We need the new oven, which is on the way. And then we're gonna bring back the refrigerator, put it in here, and we're gonna have a functioning kitchen. So crazy. And if you guys would like any kind of close-up photos or anything I'm posting over on Instagram today, I'll post a bunch of different photos of the flooring, um, close-ups so you can see the texture and such. So check out my Instagram, it is just Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.